All right, in one last lesson, we're gonna wrap up pace one. We're gonna quickly cover pages 22 through 27. It's not really that hard. Um, this is where I said it looks a little bit like geometry. If you already did geometry on page 22, they have a statement followed by a reason. And uh, each reason has to match up to the statement to the left of it, okay? And if you follow, they are kind of trying to build an argument to get from a starting point to an ending point. That dot, dot, dot in a triangular shape means, therefore, we can conclude that. <laughs> Lots of symbols, all right? Um, but then for each of the reasons, we're gonna use one of those statements that we were learning back here in these previous pages. Oh! Excuse me, hope that wasn't too loud. So we're gonna use all those, all those axioms that we uh, learned and practiced and thought, oh wow, that's easy. But now we need to see where it's coming from, all right? You really, really, really need to read all of these examples here on page 22 and 23. And don't just assume, oh, I know what I'm doing, and dive in, or you are going to get stuck. Uh oh. Ah! I think I'm allergic to school starting. <clears throat> As I'm making this video, it is July 11th, it's summertime. And uh, I'm trying to get a jump start um, on getting this Algebra 2 course put together. Okay, let's look at the bottom of page 23. It says, supply the axiom or theorem that justifies each statement. So look at number one there. It says, first of all, x equals y. Then x plus 9 equals y plus 9. So you see what's happening there? We're adding the same thing to both the x and the y. So you can look back and find the name of the axiom that um, <coughs> justifies that. Jumping down to number 3, a equals b, and then negative 5 times a equals the same number, negative 5, times b. So you see we have a and b both being multiplied by the same number. So you've got to find the name for that axiom. Um, number five, they give you two lines. That's a good clue that it's that really long name. And number nine, don't miss the point that it's saying one times parentheses, x minus one half equals x minus one half. So that's one being multiplied times that. <clears throat> when you get to page 24 and 25, um, they want you to take the information and they kind of walk you through here how to do it on page 24. And then you get to do a few of them here on page 25. Number the one at the top, they already have all of the statements. You come up with the reasons. And then they have a couple of them missing in uh, primarily the, the what's given. Okay, and so you can write that in as a first step. And then you should be able to figure out, well, what is the conclusion? If I solve both of these things, what conclusion do I get? <clears throat> and then the reason is one of those statements. Like I said, this is, there's nothing to solve here. It's all logical thinking and following rules, which is a very important part of all the advanced math that we're heading into. And uh, little details can make a big difference. So make sure you're understanding. When you get one wrong, don't just copy it. Make sure you understand why. <clears throat> all right, then let's go to page 26. When we're adding numbers, the numbers have the same sign, like negative two plus negative five, then we just add the two absolute values, two plus five, and keep the common sign. Add and keep the common sign, remember that? If they're different, negative two plus positive five, then the page says we're gonna take the absolute values, subtract the smaller from the larger, and then keep the, abs keep the sign from the larger absolute value. I always just say subtract the smaller from the larger, keep the sign of the larger. So that's the rule for addition if the signs are different. Um, then on page 26 is the rule for subtraction. And we just learned about additive inverse. So we usually 
change, so let's say 5 minus 7, we're going to change subtraction to addition, change the second number to its additive inverse, and then we apply this rule where we subtract the smaller from the larger, keep the sign of the larger. You get some examples of that, and then they want you to apply it. Hopefully that is real easy pre-algebra stuff that you're just reviewing, ending with a positive easy lesson and then the last thing on page 28 we sometimes call this <clears throat> the order of operations and back in pre-algebra we gave you that little clue remember please excuse my dear aunt sally P-E-M-D-A-S. Please excuse my dear and Sally. So we first do anything that has parentheses. The next step is we deal with any exponents or square roots. Then in the next step, we do all the multiplication and division in one step from left to right. Important, you go from left to right. And then the last, the very last thing you do is combine any addition and subtraction, again, from left to right in solving a problem to get the correct answer. So here they call it chain operations. And um, they kind of talk about it there in the middle of the page in parentheses. I mean, it has one, steps one, two, and three, but basically we're talking about these, these steps right here, okay? So I'm just trying to tie it in with what you have known from before. And uh, you're at the end. Okay, review, check up, self-test, hope you do well on the PACE test, and uh, we'll work on getting some videos together for PACE number two.